We are now going to see RSA signatures in the random oracle model. So let's first remember how we generated an RSA group. We had a gen algorithm that took the security parameter as input. Now remember our goal since this is a signature scheme is to generate a secret signing key and a public verification key. The way we generated it was we picked two prime numbers, remember P and Q, of roughly equal length. We multiplied them to obtain a composite number N. This defines Zn star as the group that we are going to work in. And we picked two values E and D such that E times D was equivalent to 1 modulo phi of n, which is p minus 1 times q minus 1. And then the secret signing key was set as d, and the public verification key was set as n together with e. Then we had an algorithm for signing messages using the signing key. So it took as input the signing key and the message and produces some signature sigma. It generated sigma simply as follows. So it computed the random oracle output on M and then that to the power D, of course, modulo N. And then we could verify this signature using the verification key VK, which is public, and given the message and the signature together. And this outputs either accept or reject. And it simply output the result of this condition. It checked if M is indeed equivalent, sorry, random oracle of M is indeed equivalent to sigma to the power e, of course, modulo n. So when you think about sigma to the power e, since e times d is 1, these will cancel out. This will give us random oracle of m. So this is a correct encryption scheme. The theorem we are going to prove today is as follows. If the RSA assumption holds, so the RSA assumption is true, then this scheme here that we defined is a secure signature scheme, meaning it is existentially unforgeable under adaptive chosen message attack. And this theorem is in the random oracle model. So if the RSA assumption holds, this scheme is existentially unforgeable under adaptive chosen message attack in the random oracle model. And as usual, the way we used to prove these theorems were as follows. If there exists a probabilistic polynomial time adversary A that breaks the scheme, meaning forges a signature with non-negligible probability using this scheme. So it forges a signature that verifies like this with non-negligible probability. Then remember we could construct, we are going to construct another PPT adversary, let's call it B, that breaks the RSA assumption again with non-negligible probability. For this proof, as usual, let us draw our adversaries. So this is the outside adversary. This will be B. And the inside adversary we are going to have is A. We have no idea how A works. We don't care. What we know is that A is trying to forge a signature. So A is going to play 
the signature unforgeable to gain. A needs to be given the security parameter together with some signature verification key. Then at some at any point A can ask, let's say, for a signature on some message MI, we need to give back the corresponding sigma i and finally a is going to output some message and sigma remember this message needs to be different from all the query messages since this is a proof in the random oracle model in addition to these at any time during this interaction again a can query let's say some zi value for the random oracle and needs to be given back the corresponding yi this is the output of the random oracle so this part is the random oracle queries this part is the regular signing queries and b needs to respond to them all what's the game b is playing let's call this outside challenger c we know what c does c generates NRSA group using this gen scheme so it outputs an ED and then it picks some X randomly from Z and star and it gives B the following it gives B the security parameter N E and some element W such that W is indeed X to the E modulo N and B's goal is the output x in z star so module n this is the proof we are going to do